Hello ladies and gentlemen, in today's video I'll show you how you can turn this photo into a 3D scene. First of all, we'll create three separate layers, mountains in the background, mountains on the left side and this person in the foreground. So we should basically have three layers stacked on top of each other. And after that we'll use Grow Shrink animations in PowerPoint to create this awesome 3D parallax scene with some flying text. It's going to be a fun one, so let's get started. And before we jump into the action, my dear friends, I would like to share with you the inspiration for today's tutorial and it is a YouTube video where a single photo was converted into a 3D scene using After Effects. And after watching this video, I started thinking if we could create something similar using PowerPoint. And we will definitely find it out in this tutorial. So once again, well done MDMZ, link to his video is in the video description. And now let's continue with our tutorial. So the first step is to find a beautiful photo that we could convert into 3D. And here on Unsplash.com I have uh, collected a little album of photos that are suitable to converting into 3D. Alright, so link is in the video description as well if you'd like to check out these photos. By the way, I have inserted the same photo that MDMZ has used. Alright, if you'd like to use that. But for this tutorial, I think we could use this photo of snowy mountains uh, provided by Joshua Earl. Thank you very much. And this photo suits us very well because it has a foreground with this person, it has a middle ground with these mountains on the left side, and it has a background with mountains as well. And all of this will be really helpful when we'll be selecting and animating different parts of the image. And now let's make sure that we download the highest resolution possible. Once again, thank you Joshua for making this awesome photo and sharing it on Unsplash.com. Alright, and next we'll have to cut out or isolate the different parts of this image. And for this purpose, I'll be using Photopea, the free online photo editor. And now let's just select the Unsplash photo and let's drop it into Photopea. And by the way, if you are good at using Photoshop, GIMP, uh, Photopea or any other photo editor and if you know how to make selections inside of photos, then of course feel free to jump to the animations part, you will find the timestamps in the video description. And for those of you who would like to learn more about working with Photopea, I'm more than happy to share my tips. Alright, so first of all, I think we can crop down this photo to 16 by 9 so that later on we won't have to do that in PowerPoint. And for that we'll be using the crop tool, here it is on the left side, let's click it. And now let's go to this little drop down menu and let's choose fixed ratio. Alright, and for the width let's choose, uh, let's insert 16 and for the height let's use a 9. And let's double click this little check mark to apply the changes, super duper awesome. Alright my friends, so the photo has been cropped, let's select the move tool, ok. And now I think we can adjust this image a little bit, so let's go to image adjustments and let's add a little bit of contrast. We can use this little slider and add as much of contrast as we wish, I think 40 looks good. Alright, and I think we could add a little bit of uh, saturation as well, so let's go to image adjustments, hue saturation. And for the saturation slider, let's add something uh, subtle, for example 5 and let's click OK. Okie dokie. And by the way, if you'd like to quickly zoom into any part of your photo, you can select the zoom tool or just hit letter Z on your keyboard, click and drag to the right side to zoom and drag to the left side to zoom out. So that's really useful shortcut. And if you hold down the space bar, you can just grab your photo and move it around just like that. That's really useful as well. And one more shortcut that I'll be using quite often during this tutorial is Ctrl-0 that will fit our photo inside of the window, just like that. Alright my dear friends, so let's finally create some selections and let's select our beautiful foreground. So let's go to this tool called Magic Wand, let's just right click to expand it and let's choose Object Selection. And now let's just go near this person with red jacket and now let's just click and drag and let's make sure that this whole person is covered. Let's release and this way we have quickly made a selection. But it's really hard to see what we have actually selected, let's zoom in. And here you can see this little line that goes along this red jacket, so this is the selection line. But still it is hard to see. And one easy way to quickly check what you have selected is to hit letter Q. And this way you will enter into the quick mask mode and everything that is in red is not selected and everything that is visible is selected. So as you can see the person is selected and we as well have selected some additional areas around the hands and between the legs. 
and later on I'll show you how we can remove those parts. And now let's continue selecting the foreground. We still need to select the ground where the person is standing. So let's hit Q to deactivate the quick mask mode. And this time let's use quick selection tool. Okay. And let's make sure that we're working in the unite mode because we don't want to create a new selection. We just want to add to the current selection. And by the way, you can use the square brackets to increase or decrease uh, the size of the selection brush. Okay, so let's zoom into this rock where the person is standing. Okay, so this rock has not been selected yet. So let's just click on it. Let's drag and let's select this second rock as well. All right, let's zoom out. And now if we enter into the quick mask mode, as you can see, we have selected some additional areas. That's awesome. Okay, and now let me show you how we can deselect this area between the legs because we don't need this area inside of our selection. Okay, and first of all, let me just decrease the size of the selection brush just like that. And now to deselect or subtract from the current selection, all we have to do is just hold down Alt. Let me just zoom in here and show you how it works. So now we are in the Unite mode and once I press down the Alt key, we go to the Subtract mode. So that's really useful shortcut when you want to quickly subtract something. Okay, so now let's just hold down the Alt key and let's just click once. And as you can see in the quick mask mode, now we have a nice selection. Of course, there are a couple of areas we'll have to clean up, but now we have a pretty rough and good selection of our foreground. And now to make those little selection adjustments, I like to use the lasso tool. So you can just select it here on the left side or just hit letter L. Uh, let's make sure we are working in the unite mode. Once again, we want to add to the current selection. And in case we need to subtract, just hold down the Alt key. All right, and now let's zoom into this hand on the right side. And as I can see, we still have to select some parts of the hand because not everything is selected that we need. So let's just zoom in a little bit more. And you can always hold down the space bar to move your image around. Now let's hit L to activate the lasso tool. Now let's start adding a selection and let's select those areas that have not been yet selected. Okay, so let's make sure that we select the fingers just like that. And let's make sure that we come back to the starting point where we have started uh, making the selection. So we basically have to make this little loop. And once we finish uh, making this little loop, this selection is added to our current selection, just like that. All right. And now let's make sure that we select this uh, highlight on the right side of the jacket as well. So once again, let's just click and drag to select it. And let's make a little loop and this loop is being added to our selection. That's awesome. And sometimes you might want to delete something from your selection. So in that case, all you have to do is just hold down the Alt key and draw a selection around those places that you want to subtract. For example, these uh, little areas around the hands. Let's just hold down the Alt key and drag around them. And this way we have removed them from the selection. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so let me finish cleaning up this selection and I'll meet you in a second. my friends so the foreground has been selected once I hit the letter Q as you can see the foreground is selected that's awesome so let's make sure that the selection is active and now let's go to this little button and let's click on it and this way we have added a mask so as you can see the rest of the image is hidden and now only the foreground is visible but as you can see once I zoom in the edge of the photo is looking quite rough so let me show you what we can do to fix that so let's just hit Ctrl Z to undo this mask. Let's make sure that the selection is still active. And now let's go to Select Modify and let's choose Contract. We will contract our selection by one pixel. As you can see, the selection went in a little bit inside of the photo. That's good. And now let's go to Selection Modify and this time let's choose Feather. And let's feather our selection by one pixel. And now our selection should be smooth. Let's hit Q to enter the quick mask mode. As you can see, we have this soft edge. That's good. And now once we click this mask button, now we have a soft edge. That's super duper awesome. Okay, let's zoom out and let's check if everything is looking beautiful. Let's zoom in. Let's check out how the snow is looking. That's beautiful. All right, so I think we can rename this layer. Let's just call it person. And now we can duplicate this layer. Let's just right click and choose duplicate or we can just hit the shortcut Ctrl J to duplicate. 
And now let's move the person layer to the top and let's uh, hide it for now, okay. And now let's select this bottom layer and let's make sure that we delete the mask. We will create a new mask a little bit later on, all right. And now on this bottom layer, we will have to cut out these mountains on the left side. So let's just call this layer mountain left. All right. And before we start cutting out this mountain on the left side, we need to hide the foreground. So we basically have to hide this person and this white snow that he's standing on. Okay. So first of all, we need to make a rough selection. Let's make sure that we activate the lasso tool. And now let's just roughly drag around and select the person and this white snow at the bottom. Okay. So let me show you in the quick mask mode. So this is the rough selection that I have. All right. And now let's go to edit. Let's go to fill. And now in the fill options, let's make sure that the content aware fill is activated. You might see foreground. So let's make sure that the content aware is selected. And what content aware will do, it will look at the rest of the image and will use that information to fill the area that we have selected. So let's just click OK and see what happens. And skadoosh, we have some pretty awesome results. Let me just hit Ctrl D to deselect any of these selections. And of course, here in the middle, we have a little bit of sky, but don't worry, I'll show you how we can fix that. Let's just go to clone tool or you can just hit uh, S. And now you can use the square brackets to adjust how big your brush will be. For example, just like that. And for the stem tool, we first have to set the source place. So let's just hold down the Alt key and click once to set the source. And now we can just paint over this uh, sky with the information from the source, just like that. And you can repeat this process a couple of times until you get, you know, the look that you wish, just like that. And let me use the stamp tool on this, on these uh, white uh, mountains on the left side. And let's just paint this bottom part just like that. And now the mountains on the left side and the mountains in the background are ready. Okay, and now we can select these beautiful mountains on the left side. And for that, we can use the lasso tool, just hit L. But this time, let me show you a new selection tool that we could use. And this is a pen tool. So let's just click on it or hit letter P to select it. All right. Let's make sure that we're working in the path mode. That's good. And now all we have to do is just click and drag. And this way we can insert points. And this way we can create our beautiful path. And by the way, if you will accidentally create a point where you don't want that point to be, just hold down the space bar and you can adjust where this point lands, just like that. And then you can just hold down the space bar to move your image up and down and continue drawing your path. And by the way, if you would need to use another tool, for example, zoom tool while drawing your path, then of course, feel free to use the zoom tool. And once you come back to the pen tool, make sure that you hold down the control key and select the last point. And this way you'll be able to continue drawing your beautiful path because otherwise Photopea will think that you want to create a second path. All right. And now let's continue clicking around these mountains on the left side. And let's make sure that the end point of our path is close to the starting point. It doesn't have to be exactly on top of it, but it has to be close. Now let's click on this selection button. Let's click OK to make the selection. That's good. And now let's click on the mask button to add a mask to our mountains on the left side. That's awesome. Now let's zoom in and let's check how the edge of our mountain is looking like. As you can see, we have a little bit of a blue color here. And to fix that, we can just select the mask of the mountain left layer. Okay. Now let's select the brush tool. Let's make sure that the black color is selected. And now we can just brush over those blue areas just like that. And this way you can quickly edit your mask and hide anything that you wish. And by the way, if you would use white color, you would unhide things. Okay. And now let's duplicate the second layer, Control J to duplicate. Let's hide the second layer. And for the most bottom layer, let's uh, delete the mask and let's rename it. Let's call it Matterhorn. So this is the name of this beautiful mountain in Zermatt, Switzerland. And next in this most bottom layer, we have to hide these white mountains on the left side because we have them on a separate layer. So once again, we can use the same technique. We can use the lasso tool to make a rough selection. It doesn't have to be precise, just roughly. Uh, select these uh, white mountains and after that we can use the content aware fill to fill these white mountains with those beautiful blue pixels from the Matterhorn mountain. Okay, let's make sure content aware is selected. Click OK. And now we have a pretty awesome result. So let's hit Ctrl D to deselect any of the remaining selections and now we finally have all of the three layers that we need. We have the background, the Matterhorn mountain, we have these mountains on the left side 
and we have the foreground. That's super duper awesome. All right, so let's make sure that all of the layers are unhidden. And now let's go to file and choose export layers. Let's make sure that we uncheck this first check mark because none of our layers are starting with letter E. Okay. Now, as you can see, three layers are exportable and let's uncheck trim transparent parts because we want all of our three layers to have the same dimensions. And now let's click on this button, export layers. And now all of these three layers will be exported as one zip file. So let's just extract this zip file. And here we have all of our beautiful three pictures. So now let's finally jump into PowerPoint. Okay, let's make sure that the slide layout is blank. And now let's go to insert photos and let's look for those photos that we have just exported from Photopea. Here they are. Let's select all of them and let's click insert. And now we have all of the photos that we need imported into PowerPoint. So the first layer will be this red jacket hiker. That's awesome. And the next layer will be these mountains on the left side. And the last layer is going to be this photo of Matterhorn. All right. So let's select all of these guys and let's align them to the center and to the middle. That's good. And now let's just group them into one group so that we can align them easily to the center and middle of the slide. Just like that. All right, now we can ungroup these guys and let's jump to selection pane and let's give them proper names. So let's call them the first one person, then mountain left, and the last one Matterhorn. All right, now let's make sure that we select the first layer and that is the person layer. Okay, and now we'll be adding animations. So let's go to animations and let's look for growth shrink animation. It should be under emphasis section. So here it is, Grow Shrink Animation. And now let's jump to the Animation pane and let's see what's going on. And as you can see, the Grow Shrink Animation has been added. That's awesome. You can decide how you want this animation to start. Let's leave it on click. And for the duration, let's insert 4 seconds. Now let's double click this animation and let's jump to the Grow Shrink options. And now for the growth size, let's use 180%. Of course, you can experiment with different percentages. And let me add two seconds of smooth start and smooth end. And let me check this auto reverse uh, checkbox, which means that once the animation will be finished, it will reverse back. And for the repetition, let's choose until the end of slide, just for fun. And now we can check out how this single animation looks like. So as you can see, the hiker basically zooms in and zooms back with the help of the grow shrink animation. That's awesome. And now we can use the animation painter to copy the animation of this hiker and paste it to the rest of the layers. Let's just double click the animation painter. And in the selection pane, let me hide the person layer so that we can click on these mountains on the left side. That's awesome. Let's hide them. And now let's apply the same animation to the last photo. That's awesome. Let's make sure that we click show all in the selection pane. And now once we jump back into the animation pane, we should see three animations in total. So for the second and third animations, let's make sure that they are starting with previous, which means with the first animation. And now all we'll have to do is just to adjust the growth percentage. So for these mountains on the left side, let's use 120% because we want these mountains to move at a slower speed. And that's why we're using lower percentage. We don't want it to move at the same speed as the hiker. And for the most bottom layer, let's just use 110%. And of course, these percentages are purely creative choice and you can experiment with your own values. And now let's check it out on the full screen. And skadoosh, ladies and gentlemen, we have turned this photo into a 3D scene. Looks like a parallax effect. And let me show you one more thing. Let me show you how we can insert a slide title that flies in from the left side and goes behind the person. Okay. So to save some time, let me jump to my previous presentation and let me just select this text. These are just three text boxes. All right. Let's uh, copy these text boxes and let's paste them right here. And let me remove this flying animation that comes with this text box. We'll do it together. Okay. So in the selection pane, let's make sure that the person layer is on top so that the text goes behind the person, just like that. Now let's select the text layer and let's go to animations and let's click on flying animation. Okay. Let's choose direction from left. That's good. Now let's jump to the animation pane and let's do the necessary adjustments. So first of all, let's make sure that the flying animation starts with previous together with the rest of the animations. And for the duration, we can use eight seconds. And now in the animation options, let's add four seconds of smooth and just to keep it smooth. All right. And now let's check it out on the full screen. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know how you can turn your photos into 3D scenes. 
Thank you for watching, stay happy, stay healthy and I'll see you on my next video.